Hello everybody and welcome back. We are about to start round number four of our Misty Mountain Spring Club. We have an exciting match and actually these players are doing well too, so it's kind of the best of both worlds. Right. Uh, we have Artie Gurria on the right playing Roatog. And then we have Peter McGrain on the left with The Rock, a fan of both both PK and myself. We are. Yeah, Rock, totally die. Yeah, so uh, we're excited to see this match. I'm going to go let the players know that they can get started. Uh, you can fill them in on the wonders of what these decks do. All right, well, on the one hand, on the left side, we have The Rock. The classic black-green, good stuff, mid-rangey wonder that has thrilled and excited us for... Years and years played Magic. It's playing the uh, more Lanny style, if you're familiar with it. Um, using some new tech like Phyrexian Rager in their deck. And uh, on the right side, we have Artie Uriah. He's stuck from Iowa, and he's playing Roatog today. Um, more or less uh, a string of cantrips trying to uh, make a good, a good sized... Uh, Praying Dryad or Psychotog. So let's bring that one up. It, so the Grotog deck is like kind of a port from like an old classic legacy or old extended archetype. It's a lot different in pre barter because of the mana base, but when when it works, it's really fun and really powerful. So Yeah, it's a super cool deck. It's a play like, you know, a whole, like, kind of whatever cards it wants because it goes off Mox Diamond. Although his version is a little different, it's a little more just like it's a, little, it's a lot more blue. I, I feel this, like this seems pretty normal. What I see. Oh really? I thought uh, like don't they usually have like a bunch of source of shares and stuff? Uh, I don't think I think they usually have them in the sideboard, which okay. we do see. So um, I'm looking for one thing that usually has is Armageddon. Is that present in the list? I don't see it. I don't, and that's that's usually actually in this matchup where like one of the tools where it's, it's actually pretty powerful. He's playing like gush foil though and phases, whole set of fire ices, meddling mage to keep everybody honest. Yeah. All right, so like this is kind of an interesting matchup because the uh, the rock that actually does a pretty good job of interacting with the the threats that that already might produce. I don't. I just. I feel like I got really quiet, and I don't want to. Oh <laughs> yeah, no. Voice, it's like okay. to carry like all the way. Just give them tips on on, on what they're playing. So yeah, um, it's using Winter Orb over the normal, um, or the, the Armageddon you mentioned. Uh, okay. For his mana now, and those Winter Orbs are going to be are often very rough for the rock. I, I don't. I don't. I don't like it when you play we have to. Well, I mean, a lot of times when you play the rock, like your best card is is pernicious deed, and so that. A lot of that weight is still going to come onto that card. I will also say, every time I play against this deck with the rock, it's 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 an itty pretty. <laughs> but this is a this is kind of that new rock deck, which plays out a lot different than something yours truly would sleep up. So we'll see we'll see how it changes. Uh, hopefully the stream is continuing. I'm getting some notifications that there's some drop frames, so. Hopefully you're able to stick with us, and uh, I don't know if we just have a poor internet connection right now, but we'll try and produce the the best quality we can. But appreciate you guys sticking with us. Are you looking around? <laughs> it's, it's Peter Mulligan a number of times. I feel like they've been shuffling for a bit. So. This might be a second hand. Who do you like in this matchup? I think I would, I would guess the Rock is a little favored. Yeah, I, I do feel like they're the way that things lined up, that uh, they can answer the threats that the Pro Talk has. Twice. So, okay, two cards go to the bottom, and the Rock's gonna kick things off with a bear. A bear. When, when I played my Rock deck against this deck last night, <laughs> I was, I was, I was winning a lot. Uh, Chad has asked what my take on natural order is. Uh, I like the idea of it. Um, I'm actually more of a fan. Well, so part of the problem is Rock like doesn't have a super high power level. It's very consistent, and um, the natural order does help with that. I actually like the pattern of rebirth decks. Uh, those are my favorite versions. But... All right, uh, Artie's gonna start with a flooded strand to get an island right away. I kind of like the natural order ones. It's kind of like. 
you're playing this like card for card thing, and then occasionally you just swing to the fences. I, get, I mean, the one nice thing is it like drop some gigantic haymaker. You only it's only like five cards different from like most lists, and oh. We weren't done after that island. Uh, we have a Mox Diamond and then a Turn 1 Carrion Drive. And Pretty much what you want to do. Yeah, well, a lot of the games are really different if, like, if you're able to spend oh. your turn, um, if you use your cantrips to find a Carrion Dryad, then you've used a lot of resources that otherwise would grow this, this Dryad. So now, like, everything that Artie does is just going to make this a bigger and bigger threat. So you can just, like, protect this and ride it to victory. Oh, uh, here's a winner or doesn't this doesn't doesn't pump up the Kieran drive, but I think it's something that's okay. It, it doesn't, but this is exactly the kind of draw you want if you're on Grow Talk against a deck like this. <laughs> I think he went. She threw up Rexia Ranger. <laughs> that not not great to, to cast into a, not the a best, winner. Not the best card against a winner arm. <laughs> Though it is saying it, it in theory could block the two two. Uh, yeah, I'd be looking to draw one of my wall roots here to get out of this. <laughs> get, get a little freer mana. Hopefully, you could uh, find one of those. <laughs> So here's a sleight of hand. This is gonna sift through your deck. You're gonna find the cards that you need, and you and you're growing your threat. So this is this is just like the ideal situation for this world specialist. If he's able to keep this uh, carry and dragon in play, he is sitting pretty. And there's a meddling mage, so that only grows it once. It doesn't count twice for two yeah, different spells. <laughs> um, but the meddling mage I, again. I forgot to bring down the tokens to identify what they name. But I would guess. Vendetta or Pernicious Deed? I would name probably Pernicious Deed. Artie's got our back, though. He's writing... I think it says Deed. I think it's Deed as well. Mike Frey has tokens. I think they're actually just in my box over here. But there's a lot of stuff in there, so we'll take through it a little bit. Alright. Leader. It's a duress. It's gonna get a fire ice. Already uh, fully shielded down here. No. Swing for big six here. What, what's up, Dress? Dress might be blocking oh, okay. here. Nope. <laughs> Chump blocks the dress, puts the graveyard. And so this is this has just been a very smooth draw for the girl attack deck. Uh, it is looking like a, just a wrecking ball. Uh, yeah. Like, <laughs> it is painful to tap mana against a winner. Yep. I mean, that will get in the way. I guess it, it replaces itself at least, but yeah. It's certainly not solving any of the problems that are, that are in play. I might have slowed it down earlier, but uh, now it's just. I was just going to chump block. All right, so the team still comes in. <laughs> I guess the, the wall blossoms. You can choose to go to four and block the meddling mage, or go to He's six. Gonna jump. All right. jump. It's a little better to block the mage there, but I'm not sure. I tap two lamps. You tap two lamps. <laughs> tap one again. No. I got Mike on it. You know, face the situation. It's called therapy coming in against uh, Artie's three card hand. Alright, of course, he's going to get to Already got a daze. That village, and he's just gonna skip up. Yeah, so quite a clinic from from the girl talk there. That yeah. was. Are you gonna try to leave that winner play? No. Nope. <laughs> All right, let's uh, take a gander at these 
sideboard, so there's some sorts of Hoshares, Disenchant, there is an Armageddon, Annulled, Chill, Engineer, Plague, Pyroclasm, and Trinkle Domain, so maybe Swords Plowshares, maybe Armageddon, otherwise I don't think you really need, I, you might bring in Annul with Pernicious Seed, but that's very, it's pretty narrow, it's very man efficient, but um, not really much that I see in the sideboard that's super appealing out of the Grotog list, but I mean, it, it's not like his deck is bad in general, there's not that, right. I don't know if there's any cards that I like, am looking to take out, in so... For sure that Armageddon's coming in. I'd probably bring the plows in just to sure. uh, deal with a, ba a Baloth or something like that. Are there um, any heavy hitters out of the, the, the rock list that we're looking at? Rock is has Smother, two, a couple of removal spells. Um, Smother and Vendetta, I would imagine, come in. Like, one good way is like answering the threats, and then that buys you a lot of time, and then, then your deck can kind of just take over. Yeah, I don't he could bring in Crumple just to deal with Wind he's, he's already got two Manic Naturalizes. Um, yeah, I, mean, I, could, uh, I think you bring in Naturalize just just in case. I mean, you don't know what's going to come out of a 5 4 deck like this. Yeah, I'm trying to think if there's commonly enchantments played, otherwise, artifacts would hit everything, but I don't know, I'm not sure. Um, Best thing you can do is have a seven card hand. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I, I think I mean. We were saying that we liked the rock in this, but um, it's only the way that played out that that didn't look very smooth. Um, there's already a, a good amount of removal spells. Like there's a couple of vendettas and spellers that were already in the main, and that that does help against a list like this. Yeah, I think I could recurring nightmare against the stick. Um, okay. And probably like stuff like the drain sherbet, if there's one. Yeah. Oh, maybe you want those. Because if you get a situation, if you get to that point, you you get to a point of recurrent during tournament, but you're not losing, right? I think... I'm trying to figure out what I do here. Yeah. I think the cards... Oh, there, there's also a Diabolic Edict in, in the Rock Lust, so there, there's a good amount of, of removal. So I guess the way I would kind of try and shape, I mean, I, you might even card a card like Pyroxene Ranger, which is not very impressive. Um, so I would, I don't know, even though the, the Rock is down a game, I, I wouldn't be upset with the, this, this matchup. I feel like there are a good amount of tools that he has to, to fight here. I like bringing lots of, like, I would bring in every cheap one this man. Yeah. Because, like, that's all you need to do is keep them yeah, the, a threat. The one downside is sometimes like you remove like the Kieran Dryads and the Meddling Mages and then like a second Tog comes down and you I guess actually his removal spells he, the vendettas aren't good against them, but like you still have Smother and Diabolic Edict, so Peter still has a good amount of removal spells for for that. Can't put that Tog anyway. Yeah, well that's what I was saying, yeah. But even if you could they could just blow it up. Yeah, make it huge. <laughs> Do you ever think about like the fact that Beta's kind of like a fling on yourself? You're casting fling on their creature, <laughs> but it, it's hitting you. Sure. Uh, <laughs> I, so a lot of people like talk about uh, Vendetta and they're like, "Oh, you don't want a Vendetta and Dreadnought." But I'm like, I mean, the first Vendetta and the Dreadnought, I'm fine with. I don't. I, don't, I yeah, the first I like, one's fine. I mean. This, I like it just co costing one mana. I think it just helps in enough matchups that I don't mind a life loss. In, uh, you hate Vendetta? Okay. So, would you would play like more Smothers or whatnot, or you just don't play any future moves? <laughs> in my role. I like, uh, I like that you're playing because all the creatures I really want to kill, I'd rather have that you're playing than against. I don't know if that's true anymore, but alright. It's true. That's the truth. 
the full truth. Okay. Can't argue. Um, you heard it here. Engineer playing instead of another. I play free naturalized to me, though, instead of. Uh, uh, my rock deck's very different. Uh, I, would, I, have some, I have some takes. <laughs> <laughs> I play a Bone Shredder. Oh, that card. Oh, oh, sweet. Bone Shredder is sweet. It's, uh, it's kind of one of those cards where it's like, I just wish it were. I wish creatures just mattered a little bit more in pre modern. Um, and then the plain tone Kylos and the bone shredders could come on to play a little more often. I'll also say I I was I was feeling really good against this deck last night with my rock deck, but I play eight cards that this this rock deck doesn't that are very good, like four bird of paradise and four wild roots. Okay. So um, the the winner orb aspect yeah, of the deck is not very very effective. Yeah. I think that's where like this current rock deck loses a lot of points is playing against something like Stasis or Winter Orb or Armageddon. Um, you just your your lands are what you have, you know, and they if they if they have anything that stymies those, you're gonna fall behind very easily. Players are drawing their opening hands for game number two. Peter almost had an eighth card. <laughs> Figures that out before, before we like, so no harm there. Um, and not a hand that he enjoys, so he'll shovel things back and look for a new hand. Well, Artie looks like he is satisfied with his opener, and he will patiently wait for Peter to mulligan uh, and, and start the game. Artie running good. <laughs> Would you have played the rock? Uh, no, I think, I mean, like, I'm trying to think what I would play if I was just trying to win the tournament. I, right now, if, like, if I were just came to the tournament and was playing, I would be playing Junk Rock. It's kind of a list that I've played, um, at one of my babies, but an like aggressive... Like Junk Rock. Yes, yeah, yeah, so, like, there's Savannah Lions, Sarcomancies, uh, Carnophages, and then some Treetrap Creatures, and then there's... Wax wings and vindicates to deal with like the problematic cards that a lot of aggro decks uh, struggle with, and uh, just get to be aggressive and have play a zoo style deck. So that's what I'd be saying. What about you? And would you be playing rock? I was just, you know what? The, the thing with this format is, I love it so much that it is so hard for me to pick a deck because I love every deck and I hate every deck. Like okay. there's just, there's this, you're never like. You're never totally safe with anything you can, you know? Um, I don't know what I... I was... Like, I think I might have played my rock deck. I've been like, liking that a lot lately. I'm, like, thinking about Spring Fling. That's coming up, yeah. isn't it? Yes. So. Yeah, and there's a... Who runs that again? Uh, that is something that I do organize, so... Oh. Yeah, uh, it's all done through on online play, but uh, online play. I don't trust those computers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do I have to do for that? Uh, we, you can register through the the Facebook group, the pre-modern online play, and then the, I'll also have streams of the top eight there. That's usually at the end of the month of April. Um, so more pre-modern magic if that's something you're interested in watching. But back to this game, we have Peter kicking things off with the swamp. And Artie's going to go island into Fox Diamond. Are we going to have a turn? I see it's dry, yeah. yeah. And we got, we've got a oh, nope. medley. Page. Medley page first. What do you name here? So the tricky thing is that like we saw the list of Peter, and he's kind of spread his removal spells. So that, like, yeah. if you're naming that aspect, it's not as good. I'm guessing this is... I, I can't read that. But... can't either. But... Get this kind of Sharpie. <laughs> Mage. I, I'm, if he has the fear, he can be. Yeah, that's I, what happens when you turn think, one box time. Gener yeah, in the right? dark, I think that's what you can do. He's choosing to ice on Peter's upkeep rather than play his. Where are you, Dryad? 
Yeah. Yes. Yes. Swing it for two more. Knock with sixteen. <laughs> Mike left, I can't adjust the life totals. Oh, it's on Vendetta. Soul Red. I see Vendetta in his hand. Swing it into the mage again. After 14. All right. And follow up with another mentally mage. This was the name of Vendetta. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, that's smart. <laughs> the second one's going to be Indeed. Okay. It's just dancing around Peter's hand like he knows what's in it. Did he peek at it? Maybe. No. Okay. I, I didn't know if that he was a deed I, I didn't see the gameplay because I was away from the, the, the camera, so I didn't know if that was the joke that, that he had already peeked at his hand from peak. But... Oh yeah, he does have peak in the stack. Yeah. Yeah. The treetop village. There is a source of pop shapes. Bring up to 17, and then he's going to take. Wow, he didn't. He could have activated the other tree tap with the, the tree tap. Using there. the mana. Yeah. Yeah. Or, well, I don't know. Because I, I think that happened before blockers. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think both players missed that that was a thing that could happen. Well, did the winter orb come down later? Because he had a he has more swords in his hand. He, he only had one mana. Okay. All right. So sleight of hand, we're gonna get that. The engines, we're gonna grease the wheels as this Curian dragon gets bigger. Because he played the uh, he played the sleight of hand before, or he played the Curian dragon before attacking. Okay. Yep, we got the plow. Yep, so clearing the way. <laughs> As these meddling mages, one, two, three, four, plus one, two, three, four. Swinging for eight, the man, this Grotoglis has, has been shining. And he also played a winner arm. Or that happened, yeah, that, a, while. That that happened in, a while ago. Yeah, that, that's been a play for a bit. Yeah. Winner orb, really. Yeah. They really roll on the stack. Hands are revealed for Peter. Like, he's showing, yeah, I got a deed yeah, yeah. and two vendettas. Those yeah, meddling yeah. mages have been there, doing pretty good. Uh, he had a Volras stronghold, but no creatures. And so, um, yeah. Uh, three, medley, three free cards off the meddling mages. Meddling mages, like, good. really, really shine in that situation. Um, everything, everything going right on the Grotog side. I'm going to jump down to the floor, see if I can get someone to fill their spot. So, uh, you can talk to, to BK for the, the time being. Anyway, so the Spring Flint. It is a webcam thing. And I, I, you know, you really, I, I know what you're thinking. Webcam matches. Doesn't seem as fun as playing in person. But if you want to play a lot of pre-modern, it, it is a really fun event. All the monthlies and the, the spring flings. Get to play people from all over the world. Uh, super great community. Awesome people to play with. Um, I totally suggest it. The spring fling's a little different. Um, Format than usual. Usually, um, you play in a pod. You play about six rounds, and then that determines whether you advance or not. Mike does like a double pod system, which is really cool. Puts you in. Or not, it's not a double pod system. You just pair people at random throughout the whole thing, and then your record. The first pod is based on region, so you should be yeah. playing people that are close to but to you. The second pod is based on your standings. And it's usually like the top 25%. So if you do well, then you're playing against other players who do well in the second pod. Kind of gives it more like a Swiss round feel. Yes. 
All right, so we're getting players. We have uh, Mike Solimasi against uh, Patrick Hathaway. So we were shuffling off for the third game. Uh, Mike said, he said, I can go to the future match table. I'm going to get crushed. But, I mean, they're in game three. They're in the game three, so. What are the records? Uh, they're... They both have three match points, so they are one and two currently. I don't know what either player is playing right now. So. I think I saw that Mike was playing um, like a train with survival type deck. And I think I saw. It kind of creeps me out when I can remember what I'm really playing. It's, I think I saw that Patrick was playing um, Dream Balls. Can you figure that out? Yeah. But I wanted to sound smart, so uh, I, thought I'd okay. call, I thought I'd call it up for a week. I guess I can update the other name at this point. It is a Dream Balls! Yay! Yeah. And Sally. It's playing survival. Looks like a blue green survival build. It's a blue green survival. Yeah. So it doesn't have any other colors or just primarily? Uh, it, it has some white. It plays two and white tutors, a monk realist. I think it's Bant survival. So I mean, it's not Is this like a trade wind rider type, type style? Two trade winds, one mystic snake, one man of war. Okay. It's got some toolbox. It has an opposition and a winter orb. And you said Mike is on Dream Balls? Yes. And a waterfront bouncer. Stampeding Wildebeest. Oh, do Cooper. I have a flip? No, oh, I have a flip. I have to, to deck. deck um, so. Yeah, you do. Okay. I'll update that real quick. Okay. Uh, Island. No. And then the other one is a. Uh, Savenulite Temple. Temple, yeah. So it comes to play tap. You can tap it for blue or sack it for blue. blue. So, do you want to kind of highlight what the, the Dream Halls deck is aiming to do? I would you rather just keep it suspense? But anyway, uh, it tries to get a Dream Halls into play, and then the Dream Halls kind of turns all your cards into like Force of Will style cast cards. Yep. You can discard a card of the same color to play cards for free. Um, so, the thing they do with this is they play like a whole bunch of draw spells, like, and it's like Opportunity, Rush of Knowledge. Um, Intuition AK, um, Cutting Wish to get other card draw spells, and just basically tries to draw, 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 and then tries to brain freeze the opponent out, usually. That's a good question. Okay. Mike is assembling survival really quick. Um, <laughs> Patrick is... Is he just casting it an oppor opportunity, like a hard way? Like he just hard cast an opportunity, second. A Lotus Petal and a Temple. He's got a Abyss Bone. To, he does have... Effect. He has a Show and Tell in his hand. Okay. Saw earlier. So, I think this is a pretty reasonable gambit here. Second up. Second off some land. To... Sure, if you're just looking for that other piece kind of thing. Yeah, because once the Dream Balls is in play... Man, it's not that good. Game. So, can Mike take advantage of a Dream Halls in play, or is it just most of the time that game is just going to end on that spot, anyways? He's got a Mystic Snake. He's got a Mystic Snake. I mean, that is like if if Patrick's trying to assemble, like his deck doesn't do really anything if a Dream Halls is in play, right? There's no way you can assemble anything going, right? Yeah, a, a Dream Halls needs to stay in play for, for Patrick to do anything. So that counter spell is, is pretty good. What's the white card in his hand? Uh, in Mike's hand? Oh, it's a 9 tutor probably. 
Mike's engine. That one isn't like Tutor. I think there is another white card too. Is it a monk realist? Yeah. Probably. Assume that's a city of brass. Yeah. No. Yeah. Make it easy on us, do they? <laughs> Two mana is this gonna be an impulse? Nope. Guess we're backing up. So the cards that like Patrick has, there's a bunch of card draw spells or like there's intuitions and uh, impulses. Everything just digs to the deck. Accumulated knowledge. Actually I don't I'm not seeing impulse in this deck. Um Accumulate Lodge instead, instead. There's Meditates, but those ones obviously are at a pretty big cost if you're not going off. That feels kind of crazy to me. Oh, Chad is saying that it looked like a Ray Revelation. Um, that is in a sideboard, so that is yeah. likely that it is a Ray Revelation. Thank you, Chad. Are we getting opposition here? I guess like you got a couple creatures in play yeah what you could just hold down the fort the one problem is is like shields is down and you still might be able to resolve a show and tell but yeah they might just set up like but after that bonus like, pedal soul and i mean but after that mike's gonna have opposition plus mystics make backup so it should be a pretty good situation and i mean like the longer the game goes Mike has survival and squeeze, so it's in pretty good shape. I guess it, it depends on like how much permission his deck can produce. Like if he uses that Mystic thing, can it ever come back? Is there a Genesis? I mean, there's Trayvon Rider. Yeah, but it gets. Oh no, no, no. Yes. Still okay. painting wolf bees. Yep. <laughs> uh, Mike has looked to set up a lock of some kind at all yep, times. He yep. does have a Genesis too. Yeah, I, I was thinking that it was a spell and not a creature. So yeah, it would it would get bound and stay in play. Oh, there you weren't even joking about the stamping. Why would I? Why would one joke about stamping? <laughs> oh, I got the set wrong. Set wrong. I thought that's what I. Maybe it's visions. Maybe I spelled it wrong. All right, we're clicking on stuff. I thought it was Weather White as well, so at least oh, yeah, at least we were both right. I always think that cards in Weather White visions. No, I think I made this mistake before. I think we're thinking of a different card that's similar, but I don't know. I think I yeah. That's right. We'll have to figure what out. What was that card, card called? Um You're not thinking of the Exodus card that's like a jackal. Yeah, I was thinking of the jackal like that's, that's from Exodus. It's like that's four mana four or five. Yeah. Do with that card in pre <laughs> You can have it return to your Jackal of Herd. Jackal of Herd. If I could beat people with Jackal of Herd, I think we played this against Drunkens. <laughs> it's like, that's killable. Anyways, back at this game, we've got. You got a Dream Halls. It's dropped to the play. Yeah, I'll hit life totals. Um, so has it resolved? Because there's still it. It must have because like the show and tell resolved. I think you put a Drain Sherman into play. Okay. Well, Mike does have a cradle. Wait, so Mike had the option of. Casting the Mystic Snake and he didn't cast it on the Dream Halls? Yeah. What am I missing? He's gonna he's raying the Oh Dream okay. Alright. This is reasonable. Um this this is like multiple cards that you can like kill this. Yeah. And I, I and don't... then and then you have like a Mystic Snake that because he can he can cast a Mystic Snake for the alternate cost. It seems a little risky though, doesn't it? Yeah. Um We'll see, we'll see how it works. Like, he just he doesn't meditate this hand. He just yeah, but then you could counter that. 
I don't know. Get a cunning wish. See what he gets. Looks like he's getting. That card. Arcane Denial. Is that what it was? Yeah. So Arcane Denial counter the Rave Revelation. Um, well, it's. Can he do that? Because doesn't he get to. The Rave? I think he's flashing back the Rave. Right, but. He has a priority, does he? He tried to ray it, it got countered. Yes, technically Patrick would have priority. I guess I wonder what's having a priority. Well, in response, Patrick has cast, is that two meditates? At least one. Well, th things are happening. Um, you know, whenever somebody casts meditate against me, I never remember I have a second turn. <laughs> I, see, absolutely. You, it's, it, it might as well just say draw four cards for three. For you were three. playing against Will last night, and like you spent the turn, and then and then then you said go, and he's like, "Well, you get another turn." And you're like, oh, "Every time." I want to. I want. I want my turn to be a little bit different, given that I have two turns in a row. So yeah, I cheated. It's okay, you were just playing for fun. We were playing for fun, but... Oh, now he gets the... He gets a frantic search now. He's going to tap his lands. Patrick top 8 last time with this deck? Uh, did it make the top 8? Or get close? No, because he, he lost to Blake. And Blake made top 8. In that crate that was like crazy match we did last time. Yes. Yeah. Uh does this Dream Walls list have mana summaries? Yes, it does. Uh, yes, he has three copies of it, yes. He's gonna uh, wish again. For another arcade in the Alright, so he's just powdering all the Spells, but there's still the physics thing, right? And there is at least a blue card. Yeah, there's, yeah. So you mystic snake this, right? No? I would. How uh, would a mystic snake a show and tell? I don't know. I did this big up crazy, but letting them get the, the marking yeah. card. Yeah. I mean, uh, you might have felt like a little bit safe with the the rave. Yeah, I, I think he thought he could just. Does he? Maybe he doesn't realize it's like. Well, I don't. You know, I well, on Mike in Mike's defense, he probably was like, "All right, he does this. I get my, yeah, I get my Durant Sherman into play. I get a giant cradle. I get a card that literally taps for nine mana. Yeah. You know, um, and." I have this rare revelation. I could just kill it, you know. Um, he's surviving for a trade win. See the anger in his back. It's Remember the last time we played uh, Treatment Survival? Yeah, uh, the particular match didn't go well for me, but the rest of the month that. Uh, oh. That was the... Congratulations. Yeah, that was the January, January Monthly. So. January Monthly Champion sitting next to me, Mike Floyd. Yeah. So we're in a situation, I mean, like, okay, the, a Mystic Snake has countered. What did it come in and counter? But if the Dream Walls is still in play, 
then like Patrick can kind of like go off again because he's fought through two Ray of Revelation. Right. The the front half and the back half. He's got to win because he, like, he's getting like three turns. Yeah, there's a bunch of turns. Here's a frantic search. I like it. Funny frantic search actually gets the untap your lands. Not that it's like super valuable. But... It could be though. Yeah. I think I would have untapped the ancient too. Probably. I mean, you're, you're dying anyways next turn, right? Like, if you pass the turn, you're just dead. Yep. Is this another frantic search? Frantically searching for... Is this all in response to the Mystic Snake? I don't know, because what spell was being Mystic Snake? Had to be something. Yeah, it's not on the stack anymore. I think it resolved. The Mystic Snake. That's something a lot of uh, Dream Hunter players don't do, is leave their cards out on the stack and they put them in the, the graveyard. Sometimes. Okay, so more cards. This Was that a... Uh, Another... Is that a meditate, meditate or is that a Q-Lane knowledge? Meditate. Yeah. Hibernation. <laughs> That's a brutal card. Does it? Uh, there's no mistake. Something else. Yeah, I, I always think like hibernation just should just pick up green creatures, but it's still green permanence. Two more power. So we got opportunity. So pretty much any card that Patrick's. Casting will draw him multiple cards, make it more likely. Let's make you think like maybe you don't need the mana severance so much. <laughs> what, does he? Maybe he sideboards him out. Like he might, because if you look at how that's gone, like what is the likelihood that he's drawn this many cards and not found a mana severance? It's gonna wish again. Am I finding a brain freeze? I don't what what is the storm count? That's so yeah. It is like literally like it has to be like at least twelve. Okay. Alright. <laughs> so Patrick's able to fight through both ends of a brain revelation and a mystic snake. That was really cool. And so the the dream all <laughs> deck takes it down in three games. Mike lined up a lot of weapons there, but not enough to stop the Dream Hall's deck from Drawing what it needed to... He had nothing left in his hand. Just... He used it all. Mike looks a little beside himself. Yeah. Alright, well... So... We had some uh, more traditional magic, and then here the, the Dream Halls is always fun to see in action. As a, yeah. it, it does its thing, but... Uh... <laughs> All right, I, I'm going to take a quick break. I'm going to try and look into the frame dropping to see maybe if we can figure out something with the stream. It might reset quickly, so if it does, you might just have to refresh your browser. Uh, so thanks, everyone, for sticking with us. This was round four. We will be back in a short amount of time for round number five of the Misty Mountain Spring Cup. Thank you.